Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Anybody that's new, welcome. So I've had a few requests for uh, some minis, Jenga Block minis, and the theme being Thanksgiving. So that's what we're gonna do today. We are gonna use the Dollar Tree Jenga Blocks. They can come in a brown or a blue pack. They're found in the kids section. In here in Canada, you can't order them online, but you can order them in the US online. Some crafters were able to get them shipped to their local store for free for pickup. I know that some crafters have also told me that they're quite expensive if they pay for shipping at home. My suggestion is to try to befriend a manager at the store, maybe take down your number, or you can they can tell you when they're gonna get some in. Usually some of the stores will be able to look at stock when they're gonna be coming in. I've had luck with myself with my local DTs that I know the managers. Now, if you sign up for the dollartree.com website, um, they do give out, every once in a while, they give out coupon codes and for flat shipping. Um, last year it was $5.99 flat shipping to your house. So just sign up and check your emails because sometimes uh, they do send the codes out as well. Uh, you can find them in the kids section. I think I said that already. My preference for glue is Wellbond. I buy it at Rona slash Lowe's. Um, I, just my preference of glue. You can use Gorilla Wood glue. I've never tried myself. Um, I know DT does sell wood glue and some crafters use it and say they have no problem. I've never seen it in my store. Uh, this is my preference of glue. I would not suggest on any of my builds other than when I show you for pieces here or there to attach to whatever we're making. Wood glue or hot glue won't seal blocks properly and they'll eventually fall apart and it won't be solid. You can find this beautiful L-shaped carpenter ruler in um, the hardware section of Dollar Tree. It's great for keeping your blocks straight and even when you are gluing them together. Whatever glue you do use, please read the instructions on the back just for drying time. Usually says an hour, sometimes, especially with well bonds, an hour. Sometimes I just leave them longer depending on what the build is, just to make sure that it does seal properly and solid. Now in my videos I started a while back and I just, I feel like sometimes I repeat myself. Um, when I'm gluing blocks together, because I do pre-glue, not the whole shapes, just layers I glue together pre-video, otherwise we'd be here all day. When I glue them and I put them flat like that, I'll say flat and you'll hear me say stacked. So this is flat. And I will show you the layer like this. It's just beside each other, horizontal. And when I say stacked, it's gluing the wider surface together like this. And that's what I mean by stacked, the flat part one on top of each other. So when I hear flat and stacked, flat, stacked. Now, if you follow me on my Crafty Shopper page or my personal page and in some of the craft groups that I am in, you'll notice I'm not leaving YouTube links anymore. I am still using in some groups my name, um, my watermark on my pictures. Um, Facebook has played around with my algorithms and that's not just helping to me, it's help, it's also helping happening to, um, other creators on Facebook. Facebook is trying to do like Instagram with more reels. So every time I post, uh, they're always wanting me to do reels, pushing that so they can put commercials and stuff like that. So you may not see, I know a couple of crafters have reached out and said, Hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. And they follow me on my personal page and on a crafty shopper. And sometimes you won't get notifications. So Facebook is playing with my algorithm. So please check wherever one you follow. Um, if you're not, if you can also on my YouTube channel, you can actually, when you subscribe, you can actually press the, th uh, there's some kind of button there for notifications. So, and you will see me leaving a lot of craft groups. Um, I'm in quite a few and I'm going to be leaving some. There's just, it's just too much for me at this point to be in several craft groups and plus I do help on a mid team in a couple big 
huge craft groups actually. So you will notice me um, less visible in Facebook land. Um, saying that, my, I don't, uh, in, in the description of this video, you'll always find, um, it will put the total amount of blocks in the count. I do suggest getting a pen and paper and writing them down F for flat, S for stacked, and writing them from, say, however I start the build, top to bottom or bottom to top. It just keeps it better that you kind of remember watching the video. Sometimes it's a little bit fast and it just keeps you know how many blocks on each layer that we do. Uh, also, I do not authorize screenshots of my hands and reels. There is a disclaimer on my in my description unless you get authorization by myself. With that being said, we are going to start with a Jenga block um, candy corn crow, one of those skinny little crows. Thought it would be fun. A, fr a friend of mine, Tina, one of the uh, crafting groups, she made one. I'm not how sure how big hers is. I am going to do mine a little different, but we are going to use the Jenga blocks. And you got your pen and paper and let's start. So we're going to start from the top of the head, work our way down, and we're going to do flat. And there's going to be three blocks then we're going to switch it to stacked and there's going to be seven blocks and you're just going to center it all the way down another layer is eight blocks stacked another layer seven blocks stacked so that's going to be we're going to call it the head part, and that's 31 blocks all together. Now we're going to do the neck, and that's six stacked. Then we're going to move to the body, and we're going to do four flat. The next layer is nine stacked. Next layer is 10 stacked. Next layer is 11 stacked. 12 stacked. Another 12 stacked. And you're just gonna center it as you go down. 11 stacked. 10 stacked and five flat. And that's a total of the face being 31, the neck six, and the body is 84 for a total of 121. And now we're just gonna glue this part together. Now that we have them all glued together, if you do have any seeps of glue that does come out between the cr cracks of the um, blocks, you can use uh, Dollar Tree has these blocks in the automotive um, hardware aisle that you can buy and you can just sand it down. I always give it a good sand when, uh, when I'm done and it's all fully gl uh, glued together. Now on the corners, I use a Dremel drill and if you don't have one, that's fine too. I'm just gonna use a Dollar Tree nail file. I'm just gonna round the corners a bit just cause they're really pointy. And I'm gonna do that all the way around just the sides. So now that I got it rounded on the sides, we are gonna use, now this is just a option if you wanna do it. Uh, I started back a while ago um, using spackling just from Low slash Rona. I have the bigger tub. You can buy the smaller tub for a couple bucks. It is white. It actually dries white and then you file it. It's kind of like clay, but a lot better than clay, I find. Um, I've tried clay before and it cracks and everything. This one works really well. And it also helps the look of your project even if you don't want to fill in the corners sometimes when it dries it actually 
you file it and you can barely see the blocks through the paint once you paint it it does also help even the blocks out like i said this is optional you don't have to do it i am gonna do the front sorry guys and i am gonna do in the sides like i have done in the past with my other videos it is a trial and error and a lot of you have mentioned that you like using it it's just playing around with it and I'm not going to do the neck part in between here the stacked six I'm not going to do because we are going to put a little probably a little scarf on them I think actually I will do it just in case we don't <laughs> I haven't thought it through yet and it's just I use the knife Dollar Tree has these white putty knives I think they're used for clay and all you do is just fill in the cracks nicely. And if it looks messy when it dries, don't worry because you have buffers to use. This is another nail buffer that I use. And you just keep going down all the way on the sides so it actually makes it more rounded. I let it dry overnight and only because of the corners were a little bit thicker than the front. The front usually will dry pretty fast, but sometimes it needs a little bit extra drying. Now it does look um cakey and stuff like that and that's where the buffer you can use the nail file the two little buffers work really well just because when you are sanding it it does get a little bit dusty so i do put it in just like a flat box and i just sit on the step outside to file it all down now that i finished putting the spackle and i sanded it off now if you ever have any little spots that you find the first time around with spackle you can just add spackle right over the spackle to add um, any little spots that you need to fill in i'm just going to give it a coat of the matte mod podge um just give it a coat and then once that's dry, I am just going to use black right over top of that. Now that it's all painted, I just wanted to show you the difference. So this is the side with, um, with the spackle on it. And then this is the side. So you can see the little in grooves. That's why I just, per my preference is for the spackle. But like I said, you don't have to use it. I just wanted to show you. Now I just took some foam paper and I cut out a nose. This side's a little bit more rough, so I'm just gonna use that. You can use googly eyes if you want, and you can put some big googly eyes like that. Let me grab another one just to show you. I don't think I have the same size in this container. Is this the same size? Oh, this one's a little bit bigger. But you get the idea. So you could use these. Uh, I'm actually gonna paint some on even though I'm not a fan of painting little detailed things like that. Uh, I'm going to paint them on, but I'm going to do more of a oval as opposed to circular. So I'm still left out of the eyes. It's taken several coats to coat that way. To, uh, at one point <laughs> I was thinking about, I actually just should have just put googly eyes. All right. So while I'm still waiting for that, I'm going to finish off the eyes. I want to do a little black pupil with a little bit of white in it. Uh, get to put some feathers because crows have feathers. Now these are from DT. I have a 12 pack. Um, if you don't have them, you can also check, which I don't think at this time of year, cause Halloween's a month away. Um, they have the feather boas that are in the kids section, but I don't think they have black at the moment, probably because of Halloween. I haven't seen the black, but I have seen the other colors. Uh, I did check uh, Timu and they do have like a pack of 10 for like two bucks uh, there will be feathers in the next part of this tutorial so maybe you'll want to order them all at once if you're going to do the next build as well I'm just going to cut it off and it's going to make a mess I feel like this is like last time I did stuff with feathers it's like glitter you get it everywhere I'm going to break it and not break it off we're just going to snap it because then you can shape it that way instead of being straight and see how it curves the way you want it. And I'm just gonna fluff the feathers 
ruffle his feathers. I'm gonna take two. Well, I'm gonna show you one on each side. I'm gonna glue it right there. I think I'm gonna cut this one down just a little bit so it matches the length of that side. And I am going to do, I think two or three. I'm gonna see what it looks like with two just to have a little bit of the feathers on each side. I painted in the, the eyes a little bit black. I gotta do just one little coat on it. When you're gluing the feathers, you will notice that they're be white. Once them glued on, if you do see the white, just touch it up with a little black of paint. Little paint, little black of paint. I don't know if that made sense. It's been a long day. Um, foam paper again and I just cut out some feet and I'm just going to put them like this on an angle like he's sitting down for a hat I remember last year DT had um some material I had some left over I already cut some pieces and the wider part at the bottom is 11 inches wide. I took the pointy part off. I didn't want the pointy part on it. And the top part is just over an inch. I'm gonna fold it over. I thought the pumpkin theme was nice. I thought I had burlap or uh, burlap actually. I think it was burlap. And I thought I had bigger pieces. I only have the ribbon, but I really wanted to use burlap, but We'll just settle for the orange pumpkin and sunflower. You're just gonna put some hot glue down the side. And I think it's gonna use some more up there. And you're just gonna let it dry like that. Now that I let it let it dry just for a few minutes before I turn it inside out, because sometimes the glue will move around oh before I turn it inside out this long part here in the back part I'm just gonna glue it up like that I'll do that with you I see gluing and then we're gonna add a trim on to it I think that'll be good now sorry <laughs> i got the little um the little spider webby things from the glue dt has this burlap trim maybe you have some other better idea i just thought a little just a little bit of trim on it would look really nice just because it is thin material It's jumping out of my hands. So I'm just going to hot glue some of the top part of the trim. I don't even know. They don't have names for it. Just going to hot glue it all the way around. Now that we have the trim glued on, I'm just going to wing it. Um, I don't know why I feel like I need to do this. I just got a bunch of raffia from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to glue it around. These are uh, about four inches long, always trimmable after, but I'm just going to glue, hot glue it all around the peak of the top of it. Now that we have it glued on, I'm like, what was I thinking? Anyways, still, I still have hope for this. So I'm going to just crunch it down, crunch it up, crunch it down of bend the material i don't know i wanted a crazy hat i think that's what i was looking for than <laughs> just something silly uh let's see what he looks like now it is a little bit too big around the top and i want it drooped over kind of like this but obviously a little bit better it's kind of hard to show um i like it i don't know i'll trim it down just a little bit but i do like it just a funky hat i'm gonna stick a little bit of stuffing in there and then hot glue it on his head 
<laughs> so I got us crazy. I don't know. I'm going to leave it. I was a little bit wild. It's like crazy hat day. There he is. Um, I think it's super cute. I don't know. Um, DT has the wood cutouts. I wasn't going to put anything under him, but I decided I'm going to add some reindeer, uh, reindeer moss, I think it is. First of all, we're going to just these little boards from DT and I'm just going to put some dark walnut stain on it. Stain the bottom. I am going to use well bond to glue them on. I am going to glue them a little bit to the side. I'm going to add a little pumpkin. I have this little uh, pick. I think it's from, it's from one of the dollar stores. Put it right into the pumpkin and just add some uh, Spanish moss around the edges. All right guys, so here he is. I did add uh, an extra piece of feather in the back. So that would be four. And if you, instead of them having straight down, just make sure you fluff them up a bit, just backwards. Even if they stick a little bit, just looks better when they're a little bit ruffled. And I'm gonna name him Gus. All right, now let's start with the Jingle Block Mini Turkey. I call them minis because they're a lot smaller than the turkey I made last year. <laughs> um, we're gonna start from top to bottom. We're gonna do three flat, four flat, eight stacked. We're gonna center it as you go down. We're gonna do five flat, eight stacked. And four flat. So the total amount for the head is 32. We're gonna do the neck. Three flat. Another three flat. With the total of the neck being six. We're gonna start on the body. We're gonna do four flat. Five flat. We're gonna move to stacked ten. Stacked eleven. Stacked twelve. Stacked thirteen. Stacked twelve and stacked 11. We are gonna add legs on later, but for the body total here is 78. And we're gonna do the, like I said, later in the tutorial, we will add legs onto this, but we're gonna glue this all together. All right, I found just the corners like I did on the candy corn crow. Um, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with a spackle on the sides and fill it in. You don't have to do that, but I'm gonna do that as the next step. So when I did file him, I noticed that the face was a little bit uneven and uh, I just added another coat of spackle, uh, just a thin coat on top to even it out, which it's really flat now. I did stick it in the window. I find if you stick it in the window with direct sunlight that it actually dries um, a lot faster than if you didn't have uh, have it by the window and in the direct sunlight. I am just going to use a coat of Mod Podge, the matte one, on it, and then I'm going to use the Espresso Brown. Now, if you aren't going to use, um, if you aren't going to use the spackle, you could also stain him. I already stained my one from a couple years ago, the bigger build of the Jenga Block um, turkey, so I am not going to stain it this time. But you can if you don't use the spackle. Now that I did a couple coats to him, I'm going to add some feathers. DT has these crafting feathers. Maybe you have uh, some other feathers you, that you'd like to use. I had two packs on hand. If you can't find feathers, I'm sure Timu is always my second best if I can't find any in the store. I'm going to do them like kind of colorful and for the back 
We're gonna do it on the back side here. I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna cut all the, my face I'm just gonna cut off all the little extras on the top here. I'll do that off camera. I'm gonna start with yellow and I'll kind of perk up the, the feathers. Then I'm gonna start with red, two red. So the pack comes with 12 if you have two on hand. I am just gonna put 12 on for this part anyways. And I'm gonna do brown as well. And I'm just gonna show you, you could do another option. You could start with, do like one yellow, one red, one brown and do the same repeat of the pattern. It really depends on you. And do red again, yellow, red. Really on your preference. I am gonna stick them in a lot more but I'm gonna stick with this side of coloring as opposed to the multicolor here. I'm just gonna hot glue them on the back. Now that I have it all glued on the back, I did an extra feather just on the bottom. So I did the three yellow, two red, and two brown. Just it was a little bit more fuller on the bottom. I'm just gonna add two brown ones, fluff it up, similar to what we did with Gus. And I am only just gonna glue two on, just right there into the neck. And then I'm just gonna add some googly eyes. I'm not gonna paint them, otherwise it'll take me a while to do. Um, wish they made rectangular oval shaped googly eyes. It's always so round. And then I'm just gonna glue those right there. Oops. So now that we have that glued on, I'm just gonna take one of those long balloons, cut it down for the waddle. Some more foam paper shaped as a beak. I think I'm just gonna switch it this way. The way I cut the top, I was trying to get it to go over a bit. I think this way works better. Just gonna hot glue it on just like that. Now for the top of the head, you could, if you wanted to do a pilgrim one, you can make a pilgrim hat that can go on it. You can use some felt. You can use, um, if you do a hat, I'd suggest going down one layer from the top of the head. So the three, just so when the hat sits on, his head's more straight up and it looks like the hat's over his head. If you want to do a Jenga block hat, you could also do one. Let's see, this one might be too long. No, it's not long enough, but you know, kind of a hat like that as well, but take the one layer off on top of the head when you're going down. I'm gonna leave it like that. He's a little, he's a little baby turkey, so he's gonna need some little feathers. I just chopped a little bit of uh, three feathers, uh, top of them off, and I'm just gonna hot glue them just right on top of his head like that. Now that we got that glued on, we are gonna move on to the legs. You're gonna do three stacked, and then you're gonna stick one on the bottom so the leg looks like this. And we're gonna do two of them. We're gonna do one on each side. So he is gonna be sitting down. I'm gonna do what I did with the, I think I did it with the rooster. So I took hot glue and I just went all the way around. So when you take the hot glue, you just kind of make some random squiggly lines and you can go all the way around. I'm just gonna do the leg part. I'm not gonna do the foot part. I think I did the bigger Jenga one. I think I did his legs brown for some reason. They look like O. Henry bars or Mars bars. I can't remember what bars that kind of look like it. But you're just gonna go all the way around like that. I did just file the tip a little bit so it was a bit more round so it's not so square. Once that's done, I am gonna paint this and I'm hoping this color is gonna be closest to this orange. It's just the pumpkin orange for his legs. Now that I have it glued on, I think he looks like a little baby with that up there. Uh, did finish painting the legs. 
I did underneath, I don't know what I was thinking, because they are going to be lying flat instead of, actually you could even put him on top as well. I would have did it a little bit more rounded at the bottom, but I'm going to make him sitting um, just like Gus. We are going to just use one of the DT boards. I already stained it. I'm going to move him more towards the back of the board, just enough for the legs. I am going to glue him on with some well bond glue. And when I glue his legs, I'm not going to glue them straight on. I'm just going to lift them up just a little bit as I glue that down, just a little bit on an angle so it looks like his legs are like that, not like that. It's not fully dry yet. Um, around the base, similar to Gus's, um, the craft, we are going to just put some Spanish moss and I'm just gonna hot glue some Spanish moss just around the bottom. Now that I have the Spanish moss on, I'm just gonna add a little pumpkin, hot glue it to one side and DT has the little hay bales. Now you can put two pumpkins on either side, maybe you have acorns or pine cones. I'm just gonna do it like this, two in the bottom, one on top and just stack it on the side. All right, guys, so here is Jake. That was the name I gave him. I just think he's super cute. The little detail with the hot glue on his legs, just add a little extra to it and a little uh, hay bales. And then there's Gus. So Gus is 120 blocks and Jake is 121 blocks. I'm just gonna double check on my paper here. Yeah, 121 blocks. Which one do you guys like better? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Thank you for watching. Happy crafting and see you soon. Bye.